everybody, James here again. This is another video from the Mastering Revit Architecture uh, book series that we have up on YouTube. And in this short tutorial, I'm going to give just a little bit of an introduction on how the stair tools and the railing tools have changed in Revit 2013. Uh, we'll get into other functionality in some future videos, but just to serve as an introduction, I wanted to show you how stairs and railings are different. Uh, in this new release. The first thing I did here was to create a stair in Revit 2012 and upgraded it into 2013 just to show you the difference in how you'll find the stairs. They look the same uh, but they have slightly different functionality. So to uh, show the difference here I'm going to make sure that first my uh, project browser is there oh, and there it is and um, in this upgraded stair, I'd created a, a simple stair that's 7 inch max riser, 11 inch tread. Sorry for those of you that are familiar with metric, but you know, hopefully you'll just get the concept. Uh, and with that, there's a railing that's just called handrail pipe. These are common uh, out, out, of, out of the box um, Revit families that I used and created in 2012 and upgraded it into 13. First thing I want to point out in the project browser, which I'll expand this so we can see it a little bit better, is if we go and look under families for stairs, you'll start to see a couple of uh, unique things. First, that underneath the stairs category, you'll see another subcategory called stair. Now, this is what Autodesk had done to uh, pres uh, assumedly preserve the functionality from the older version. So if you created a stair in 2012 and, and prior versions, those pre-existing stairs are grouped under the subcategory stair. It's a little confusing, but you need to know that it's there um, as you work through projects that are not necessarily started in Revit 2013. Uh, so right here you'll see that the type 7-inch max riser 11-inch tread is the older version. Um, so that's the one we have here. We have it selected and it's one big object. Um, the newer versions come in different subcategories. You'll see that they either are an assembled stair or a cast in place stair or we also have precast stair. These are three different types of stair by components. I'll get into what all the other things are in just a minute. For the time being what I'm going to do is create a new stair right next to this one uh, in the same context. I'm going to switch very quickly over to the level one floor plan and from my architecture tab I'm going to find the circulation panel and the stair pull down and you'll notice that there are now two commands under the stair pull down. There's stair by component that's your na now is your default and the old way of doing it is stair by sketch. So I'm going to start off by starting my stair by component tool and you'll see in the properties palette that if I drop down the type selector you see I have assembled stair as it's kind of like a nested family so you have stairs then you have within the stair um, category you have assembled stair cast in place or precast and then you can create as many types under each one of those families as you'd like so in this case just to show you that the example I'm going to use the, just about the same type the 7 inch max riser 11 inch tread and you'll see as I start to build out the stair, it's fairly similar. Working in run mode, you'll see some subtle differences, like it's starting to automatically and dynamically build out the landing. That's a little different than your sketch tool. Um, it's giving you counts of treads. Notice the one to nine on the on the run that I had already created. And I'll finish that off there. And it gives you a lot of flexibility to um, uh, start to explore different functionality. Um, you can you can create multiple uh, runs that are overlapping and maybe it tees off in two different directions. Um, another interesting thing is I notice I haven't completed the sketch yet and it's giving me a three-dimensional preview. That's one of the new benefits of the stair by component tool. So you can still edit the stair and, and mess around with it in 3D as you'd see fit. Now I'm not going to get into the full functionality of that here in this demo, but I'll click finish to finish the stair. It's going to pop the railings on top of it. Uh, and I just wanted to show you one additional drill through. There we go. 
um, and what, what the main difference is. I'm going to select these railings and switch them out just so you have a better sense of what the differences are in the railings. Let me select that one, hold down the control key, select the other railing. I'm going to switch that out for handrail pipe. So it's somewhat similar to the older upgraded stair. So what's the difference here? They look pretty much the same. Obviously building them was a little bit different. The main difference that you should be aware of is that now in 2013, by using the tab key, you can tab through and pick individual components of the stair. So notice I'm hitting the tab key once and I can actually select just the run. And you'll see that the properties palette says that it's a non-monolithic run. Let's take a look back at the project browser under stairs and you see that we have monolithic runs, non-monolithic runs, and th that's pretty much it, the two main differences. The, the monolithic run is the one that you can use for both the cast and play stair and the precast stair. Uh, but the run, if we double click on that in the uh, project browser, open up the type properties, the run is essentially an, a nested type property. No longer is it just, you know, you have a family type in an instance. You have now, within stairs and railings, you have two different types of, of types, pardon the pun. Um, but within the uh, family, the stair type, you drill down and you can specify a run type and a support type. Uh, and a landing type, and each one of those has its own properties. So you can mix and match between the properties. It makes it a little bit easier to manage, but you have to understand that you have the old version and the new version kind of commingling with each other in Revit 2013. So within the uh, run type properties, you have the tread material, riser material. This used to be just in the type properties of the stair, but now you can um, control all this stuff here. There are certain things that get a little bit beyond uh, this type, but for now, just suffice it to say that it, it's it's a type within a type. So, for example, if I look at the type properties of the assembled stair, this is the new 2013 stair type. You'll see that my run type is two inch tread, one inch nose, and quarter inch riser, and it has that little ellipsis button at the right. That if I pop that open, it opens a secondary type property. So we have the system family for assembled stair. And within that, we have a nested system family of non-monolithic run. Okay, so you can select that. You can select the run. You can also select the support. Support is its own type as well. Using the tab key, I can uh, drill down and select a stringer. I can't change the type by selecting it and swapping it out. I have to go into the type property of the stair and select that. The uh, railing is slightly is essentially the same setup as the stairs you have now you have railings that are handrail pipe let's uh, close out stairs in the project browser go to railings and you'll see that within railings I have railing these are my upgraded ones from previous versions within the 2013 version you have balusters as separate types you have handrail types and you have top rails. That's one of the main differences in Revit 2013 is that the top rail is a separate selectable uh, element. This one might be one of the, those upgraded types. Let's see if we can change that out to uh, default new railing system type. Now one of the things while this is upgrading to note is that sometimes you, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but um, if I found that I had a, a really old project, uh, probably three or four versions that it's been, I've been carrying it through. Um, you may need to start up a new default project, <coughs> create uh, a, a stair and a railing, and then copy paste it back into your project if you don't see all the new stair and railing types. Um, I don't know if that's true or they or Autodesk has fixed that, but just watch for that, that if you don't see any of the new ones, you may need to just quickly um, create a new uh, project and copy paste some, some things over. Um, with the railings here, you notice that if I use the tab key, I can tab and now the top rail is a separate selectable element. Um, if you take a look at the type properties of the railing, same thing here. The top rail, a little confusing that you have a top rail type, that you have a little drop down here. Uh, the rail structure 
is now non-continuous rail. So basically anything below the top rail is what you, so if you open up the edit rails dialog box and you don't see anything here, that doesn't mean that there isn't a top rail. It's just specified somewhere else. And that about does it for a quick introduction to the new setup for stairs and railings in Revit 2013. Again, we'll get into some more specific functionality uh, in a couple of other videos coming up soon, so stay tuned for those.